Hello everybody, my name is Root, and welcome back to the Metro Dread Any% NMG Guide. Previously, we got Wave Beam, and now we are headed toward the Boss Gauntlet, which is basically Red Chozo, Gold Chozo, and then Ravenbeak. But we will not be going over Ravenbeak this time, because he deserves an entire video to himself for that boss fight. But with that, let's get started. So after we get wave beam, we are going to head towards the left and we are going to break this blob that you will see in about a second. We're going to break this blob. We're going to jump morph into this tunnel, flash shift three times, respin, jump morph into the next tunnel. For that tunnel, if you're not comfortable with flat, uh, jump morphing into it, you can just you can just grab the ledge. That's fine, too. Either way works. Jump morphing into it is a little bit faster. And then from here, we are going to flash shift three times. You can let go of your shot a little bit early, so that way it'll follow, and then you can just uh, go through the door really fast. So that way you don't have to wait to open it or anything, even though it doesn't really take that long, but you can also just do that. So it's something to, to keep in mind. And then we're going to use wave beam and destroy that blob and head toward, head out of that room. So normally with this room, if I do it fast enough, I, I use this enemy right here as a measure. If I get hit by this fire enemy, then I'm like, okay, I was a little bit slow. But in this case, I don't get hit by this fire enemy. So I feel like, okay, I did that pretty decently fast. So from here, you're gonna start, sorry, you're gonna flash shift into this door and then you're gonna flash shift two more times while also shooting the wave beam door. And then we are going to leave. So now we are back in Hanubia, and what we are going to do first is we are going to charge a speed booster. So the speed booster, really, I only like it, be I like it because I just take out, out this enemy right here, and then I can jump morph into that tunnel, so it's very convenient. So you can actually angle this shot. I missed it terribly, but you can angle the shot actually to just open the door immediately. We like opening doors faster so that way we don't have to wait for them, even though that wasn't too big of a deal because we're going to go right into a cutscene anyway. Skip the cutscene, flash. It happens so fast. Skip the cutscene, flash twice, and then you can either take out this enemy with a shot, but in this case, I just, I just slide and morph and I just avoid it entirely. So that way, just, just ignore it. <laughs> And I just flash shift all the way into this room because the cutscene is going to activate once I go to the, all the way to the right. So something I do want to bring up though is when I'm entering this room, I'm actually holding the R button. So I'm holding the storm missile button. And the reason that I'm doing that is because uh, the storm missiles will charge pretty much through the cutscene. Like the charge will hold 
and once you skip the cutscene, my storm missile charge immediately, as you can see, is on the enemy or on the red Machin. And I can get two charges off and then fl jump and flash shift over him. So that way, you know, he takes a little bit more damage. And then I release another uh, ice missile and then, you know, mash. And then I charge three storm missiles. I get three storm locks on him and release as well. So that way, that's all you need to take down this Machin's shield. And then I charge storm missiles again and then mash. So this fight is really a lot of storm missiles, a lot of storm missile usage. And either way, regardless um, of everything, because I don't actually mash in this room in particular as fast as I even can because it's kind of pointless because this room is so laggy that if you mash really fast like it just eats your inputs so it doesn't even matter so I don't really mash that fast anyway in this room so it's a lot of storm missiles and like okay mashing <laughs> at best and that'll pretty much give you all you need for power bombs nothing too bad once again I would like to reiterate about mashing I'll say this every single time it is not a necessary part of the game it is something that if you are comfortable doing and have a very safe and healthy way to do it then i would say go for it um turbo controllers are allowed if you would like to use them so you have options there but now we have power bombs so that is pretty great So after we get power bombs, we will jump and flash shift into this tunnel over here and we are going to immediately use our power bombs. So it's like, why are you charging your power bomb into this room? Root, why? That doesn't make any sense. So if you charge your power bomb in one room and exit into another, like the power bomb will still work in the next room. Whereas if I exit this room right now, if I exit this room right now, I will have to restart. Like I think it's like a four to five second charge on the power bomb. So that I just release it in this room. I flash shift out of here and then the, the power bomb still works. So I do the same thing again. And here, here's a little bit of RNG. This is very bright. If you saw, I once I released that power bomb and I flash shift, I didn't actually flash shift. So after I release that power bomb, I start shooting downwards. And that's for a reason, because now I have zero power bombs, but I need two more. So what I'll do is I will start shooting downwards and really just hope that I get power bombs. If I don't get power bombs, it's fine, but it's just nice to have for the next couple rooms. In this case, I did, so I was pretty lucky. So from here, I will start charging a power bomb again because I got them from the drops, which is very nice. And then I can let it go once more time. All right, sorry, I can let it go one more time here and this will make this room just easy. I don't have to worry about anything. And then from here, I will start flash shifting. This, why do I always go on the brightest screens? Oh my gosh. I'll start flash shifting and exiting this room over here. And once I enter this room though, so there is a faster way to do this area, but I wouldn't worry about it. The speed keep is a little bit, uh, if you're not comfortable doing speed keeps yet, you might just get frustrated. So I wouldn't worry about it too much, depending what level you are. So I just decided to opt for flash shifting because flash shifting is also fast. 
Um, but once I enter this room, I will start the speed booster and I will once pretty much once I get it, I'll store it and then I will charge start charging a power bomb. So once I start the power bomb immediately after you lay down the power bomb, you can just press B again to then start your ball spark. So the ball spark will pretty much auto time. So you don't have to time anything. It'll pretty much auto time with the flash shift. Sorry, it'll auto time with the power bomb. So that way you can um, head all the way upwards. So flash shift three times on the top, flash shift over this enemy and head into this tunnel. Go to the right, shoot the door, flash shift. We love that. We love flash shifting. Okay, last mock -in. Yes, last mock -in. So the first thing that I do here when I enter, after I skip the cutscene, of course, is I shoot a, sto a, sorry, I shoot an ice missile. So you can get one ice missile off here, which is pretty great. And just like the red mock -in, I will start charging storm missiles. So mashing really isn't uh, necessary in the first phase, to be honest. You can get three, you can get three locks on him. So three locks, jump, flash shift, and a lot of it is pretty much reading RNG, but I'm pretty much just focusing on getting three locks every single time. And after after you do that, you can actually get two ice missiles off. And this is important. You want to get two ice missiles off. So that way he won't hit you with his shield because he will do a shield attack after a certain point. And you will know you did it correctly if you don't see that. If he just goes into his second phase and you don't see that, you'll know you did it perfectly. So charging another storm missiles, got three locks, good. Two storm missiles. We're going to do one more right here. Two storm missiles. See, no shield attack. And therefore, I know that I did it correctly. So from here, when the Machin is in this animation, when it's doing its little scream attack, it's not attacks, when it's doing its little screaming animation uh, transformation at you, it's actually invincible. So you can't hit it. So you can't mash anyway. If you wanted to, you can't. So charge storm missiles because it'll last the animation. And then you can just get that DPS off. And yeah. It's great. So after that, you can do that. And then I start mashing. Once again, you don't have to mash if you are not comfortable. Mashing is not a necessary part of the game. And once again, turbo controllers are allowed if you do not want to mash. But that is pretty much the end of that fight. Just hit the counters and you are pretty much done. Two boss fights down, one more to go, which is Ravenbeak, which we will not be going over this time. So little thing that I do here from here i'll actually flash shift in this case for some reason i meleeed but i'll fl i usually flash shift and then melee onto the platform but in this case i meleeed and then i flash shift on flash shifted onto the platform little thing i guess it doesn't matter that much but maybe it does and i'm coping but that is it for today once again my name is root thank you for watching and hopefully i will see you in another video in the last video actually for this guide because it is ravenbeak into the escape sequence bye bye